Aussie bush can be a very harsh environment, and it might seem impossible to have a garden as bright and colourful as this one. But with the right plant choices and some clever ideas, it can be absolutely stunning. Lots of people think that roses are just for the English country garden, but actually they're really drought tolerant and hardy once they're established. You'll need to put lots of compost in the soil that holds on to nutrients, but they like it quite free draining. And here it's planted just above this wall so the water gets away. We're also in a private garden in the New South Wales Blue Mountains, so there's hardly any humidity here and you can tell it the leaves, they just look lovely and glossy. If you give your plant those three things, it's going to reward you with lots of flowers. This part of the house gets some hot westerly sun, and the planting perfectly suits that. We've got these lovely domes of Eliagnus. They're incredibly hardy. They hardly need much water, and they prune really, really well. Then you've got the Agapanthus in front of us. Again, a really reliable flower, but one of my favorite flowers is this Salvia leucantha here. Now, this is so easy to care for. Once it's finished flowering, you chop it down, and it just does it year after year. You know, there are some really clever plant choices in this garden, but what I've actually come to see is this dramatic landform. So what actually is a landform? Well, it's pretty much what it sounds like. It's just sculpting the land. They've been used in the past for things like burial mounds or ha-ha walls, where you cut away the landscape to keep livestock away from the residential garden, but you maintain a lovely view out. And they're incredibly popular in Europe. They add this fantastic architectural element to a garden. They're like living sculptures. And I'm happy to say I'm starting to see them more in Australia. Landform doesn't have to be about these dramatic features. It's a great option for retaining. You know, we're on a sloping site here, and the lovely curves of the greenery just make it so much more inviting. Plus, you don't have the costs of footings, engineering, building, and all of that stuff. And you get these lovely little spots to sit and enjoy the garden. What I really like about this garden is the way you get the vertical element in the landform, but then you get the opposite in the dam where the ground falls away to hold the water. And that just makes this feel so much larger and really dynamic. Landforms in the garden, they look breathtaking, but they are so much more than that. They just entice you to walk up them. And as you do, the view of the garden completely changes as your perspective moves around. Remember, what you're gaining here, you're not going out, you're going up, so you're gaining elevation. And it's a bit of a walk, but it's definitely worth it, because when you get to the top, well, the view is spectacular. Landforms don't have to be enormous things in your garden. Imagine something as subtle as this. It gives you a lovely destination. You can come and sit down, enjoy a picnic, and I'm pretty sure a few kids would enjoy rolling down it too. Yeah, yeah, that was controlled. Now, I know what you're thinking. How on earth you mow all this grass? Well, first of all, you need the right type of grass. You wouldn't do this with a kaikui that grows really fast. You want something like a cooch or a zoysia that are much slower growing. Then you need to get yourself one of these. This is a hover mower, and it's perfect for slopes. No wheels, no tracks, just lifts up, and you can slowly move it along the banks nice and safely. I think I'm going to be here for a while. I'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> 